Hey everybody, it's Professor Evans here. It's about uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, uh, May, what are we now? May 12th. Good Lord, this month is going quick. Um, so I just wanted to check in with you uh, in the middle of the week and I want to talk about uh, two things. One is your literary response that's going to be due on Sunday and two is just to talk to you about some resources that might help you get a better understanding of setting when you go to write this paper on uh you know, over the next couple days. The first is this video here. It's only about four and a half minutes long. And it's an interview uh, with this, uh, I believe they call her a literature guru in the video. And it talks about a couple things. It talks about that um, setting can have a, there can be a macro setting and a micro setting in stories, meaning there can be like a big setting and then there can be a smaller setting within that setting. For example, if a story takes place in New York City, but it takes place within someone's apartment within New York City. Well, New York City would be the macro setting and New the apartment would be the micro setting. Um, and then it also talks about why history is important in setting. It talks about how authors can use setting to tell their story. So it really speaks to a lot of the things that are going to be helpful to you in your paper um, this week. I've also included a, what I thought was an interesting article about real life setting because I always think that literature is um, – it's just such an immediate gate into what we go through in our in our lives. Uh, it applies to our lives. It helps us understand life. So I've included a link to an article that I thought spoke to the power of setting. It's actually called The Power of Place. And it talks about how the neighborhood, you can see it actually up here, the neighborhood that you grow up in, where you live, can have an effect on so many things in your future. Um, generally, how successful you are can be linked back to where you grow up. So, um, you know, place and setting is incredibly important in our lives as it is in a story. So that's not a mandatory read, but I included it um, just to give you, um, you know, sort of an interesting real life connection to the concept of setting. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll on down to our paper for the week, which is the setting literary response. All right, so when I pull this up, um, I'm gonna go through I'm going to go through what I usually do with these assignments is I'll, uh, you know, I'll read through the prompt. There we go. I'll read through the prompt with you and then uh, just pick out what I think are the most important details about this assignment. All right. So here we go. It says, choose one of the readings from this unit and in a well-crafted two-page essay, respond to the following prompt. Now, here's something that I just want to make you aware of. It says choose one of the stories in units one or two. That's the direction you want to pay attention to. This is a, a misprint. So you want to, you can pick any story in unit one or unit two. Unit two are going to be more uh, setting focused, but you can still use the unit one texts as well. Analyze the setting place. I even change color here. The setting place and setting mood, and then how the setting and mood help shape the the story. So really what you're looking at is three big body paragraphs here, right? You're going to talk about how the author provides detail to give you a sense of where you are. So does it describe the time? Does it describe the place? Does it describe what the building looks like? Does it describe the people that are there? Does it describe the smells, the tastes, the touches? Then what you're going to have to ask yourself is, based on those descriptions, what seems to be the mood of this setting? Meaning, how does this setting make you, the reader, react and feel? Is the author trying to paint this place as a really dreary location or is he trying to paint it as a lively, upbeat, uh, positive place? And you're going to have to make that decision based on the words and the descriptions the author uses. And then your final paragraph is sort of putting it all together, right? So why are the setting and the mood, how do they help the story? Why are they important to the story? Why are they necessary to tell the story? All right. So here are your steps you're going to go through. Obviously, you read through all the instructions. You read through all of the unit one and two resources. You select one, just one, of the stories or poems to write about. Uh, your audience for this essay is people who have read the stories. You do not need to include a summary. Use text examples to support your answer. This is very important. Please do not just summarize. Please use specific uh, words, phrases, examples. Your essay should have the following components, a title page, an introduction a thesis at the end of the introduction that clearly states how setting shapes the story. At least two supporting sections that defend your thesis or focus, 
tech support with properly cited in-text citations. So that's where using the APA 7th edition resources are going to be very important for this assignment. And then a concluding paragraph and a reference page where you cite the short story. This one's going to be at least two pages. You can make it more if you want, but two is the minimum. And then make sure you've got all that title page stuff on there as well. This is something else I want to draw your attention to. Use third person voice sort of wrote over that, but use third person voice, okay? You don't want to use I, you, we. Make sure instead of, you know, um, if you read this story, you would see that, don't do that. Say, if a reader were to read the story, they would see, and then you can go from there, okay? All right, let's take a look at thesis, which is um, basically what, what is your claim? What are you going to prove to us in this paper? You're going to prove to us something about the setting in your story. So here are some questions it says to ask yourself. Please make sure you review those. And the questions are basically, what is the setting and what is the place? What is the mood? And how do the place and mood affect the story? Those are, that's the question you're attempting to answer. So if you were to take the answer of your question and turn it into a thesis, it gives you the steps to do that here. Right? So here's an example for your thesis. You are welcome to use this template. So you can't use the exact thesis, but you can use the template. In Walt Whitman's poem, I Hear America Singing, it is apparent that the setting place and location shape the poem through the obvious American workers' locations and the tone of triumph and hopefulness. So we see two things here. They talk about the physical place, right? When they talk about the American workers' locations and they talk about triumph and hopefulness, which could be tied to tone and mood. And that is what a typical thesis would look like for this essay. All right, that is it for now, folks. Please make sure you uh, have a plan for the week. So we are now uh, into Wednesday morning. I would say by this point, you've got a discussion board posted and um, you have started to think about what you may want to write for your end of the week paper. All right, that's it for now. Check in with you guys later. As always, please uh, feel free to reach out to me by email or phone. And uh, always, you can stop by office hours on Tuesday evenings. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye-bye.